The world's great nations are all working to find a solution to the engineering challenges posed by nuclear fusion. If nuclear fusion is successful, it might produce almost endless energy with little waste. Nuclear fission is based on the power current and nuclear reactors, forcing atomic nuclei into one another rather than separating them as a fission process. China has made recent remarks that indicate that it has advanced significantly in that direction, which is a significant development. Chinese researchers claim to have built the first power plant in the world that can convert fusion energy into electricity without disrupting the current grid. Who or what in China is responsible for this accomplishment? To what end is China's significant nuclear fusion achievement served? Coal and natural gas are the primary energy sources currently used worldwide. However, both commodities are in short supply. Nuclear fusion, which mimics the sun's physics by combining atomic nuclei to produce massive amounts of energy and power, has the potential to be known cleanest energy source. It is a safer nuclear power option than fission because it doesn't use fossil fuels, doesn't create radioactive waste, and produces no waste. However, a popular joke has existed, almost as long as a dream. The traditional punchline states that nuclear fusion energy is 30 years away and will always be. The punchline may be ready for an update more than 82 years after Australian physicist Mark Oliphant first observed deuterium atoms fusing and producing energy dollops. Controlled nuclear fusion has made significant progress over the past few years, thanks to the efforts of more than two dozen research groups, startups, university programs, and corporate ventures. In contrast, the two widely accepted techniques to use a massive donut-shaped magnetic vessel, known as a tokamak, or extremely powerful lasers. These researchers are developing fusion reactors based on entirely new ideas. Furthermore, during the next five years, some of these organizations foresee significant fusion milestones, such as achieving the break-even point where the energy produced exceeds the energy consumed to initiate the reaction. What a remarkable turnaround given that the conventional tokamak laser effort has been ongoing for decades, costing millions of dollars but never achieving a break-even point. According to Commonwealth Fusion Systems, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, its current reactor design is on track to achieve financial break-even by 2025. According to First Light Fusion, an Oxford University spin-off in the UK, it will achieve break-even in 2024. Similarly, Tay Technologies in Southern California plans to commercialize its fusion reactor within five years. Fusion research is one of the most expensive, with large sums of money required to cover the electrical costs of a lab. There is a strong tendency to exaggerate potential achievements to obtain funding, and last hopes for breakthroughs have been dashed repeatedly. One change now is that improvements in high-speed computing, material science modeling, and simulation are removing formerly impenetrable technical barriers, and large sums of money are pouring into the field. Insert new fusion efforts with new supercomputers being used to understand better and modify the plasma in which hydrogen nuclei fuse to make helium produce at extremely high temperatures. Several researchers have relaunched previously stalled research projects, and others use brand new superconductors or combine conventional ideas in novel ways. Many new ventures will fail despite their excellent tools and innovative ideas. Nonetheless, even a single reactor capable of generating power at a reasonable cost could significantly impact the course of human civilization. A single gram of most commonly used hydrogen isotopes could generate the same energy as 11 metric tons of coal. The only long-term byproduct is a fusion reaction with helium. As climate change accelerates and demand for electricity rises, nuclear fusion promises a zero-carbon, low-waste, baseload source of power that is reasonably clean and comes with no risk of meltdowns or weaponization. For decades, the fusion dream has been kept alive by this intriguing prospect. Will one of these startups eventually bring fusion to a successful conclusion? With its recent announcements, China has taken a step in the right direction. A Chinese research team claims to have built the world's first power plant capable of converting fusion energy into electricity without interfering with the power grid, which could be a significant accomplishment. The China Fusion Engineering Test Reactor, 
CFETR expected to generate up to 2 gigawatts of peak power when it's completed in 2035, resulting in enormous amounts of heat. Earlier this year, China's experimental advanced superconducting tokamak East Fusion Energy Reactor ran for 1,056 seconds at 70 million degrees Celsius. According to Xiang Qi, Chief Engineer of Thermal Systems at the China Energy Engineering Group Guangdong Electric Power Design Institute in Guangzhou, converting the heat into electricity is difficult because the reactor must take a 20-minute break every few hours. According to Shang and his colleagues' research published in the domestic peer-reviewed journal Southern Energy Construction, this frequent interruption can generate pulse energy which can cause significant damage to the power grid. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor ITER, is a facility in France where experiments are conducted with a global consortium that includes nations from the EU to the US, Russia to China. They hope to achieve a breakthrough by the middle of the century. Chinese academics predict that Beijing will start producing fusion energy commercially in 2050. Still, the design of the fusion power plant will necessitate a sizable buffer zone to shield current energy infrastructures from these devastating shock waves. Even developed nations like the US and the UK are just slightly behind. By combining two different forms of hydrogen, the Jet Laboratory in the UK broke its previous record for energy extraction in February this year. The test generated 59 megajoules of energy in 5 seconds and 11 megawatts of power. In order to create a fully operating artificial sun on Earth, a significant amount of engineering work needs to be done. Atomic nuclei and subatomic particles like neutrons or protons can fuse to form one or more distinctive particles when two or more nuclei come together. Nuclear fusion produces a significant amount of energy without having substantial waste. This is made possible by the intense gravitational pressures in the sun's core, which operates at temperatures of about 10 million degrees Celsius. Temperatures must be significantly higher than 100 million degrees Celsius to achieve fusion at a much lower pressure. No materials can withstand such high temperatures when they are in direct contact. To achieve fusion in the laboratory, scientists develop a technique in which a superheated gas or plasma is contained within a donut-shaped magnetic field. The device that resembles a donut is known as a tokamak. A tokamak device called the Chinese CFETR uses fusion energy to create a powerful magnetic field that can contain and control hydrogen gas at temperatures 10 times greater than the sun's core. Massive amounts of energy are released when fusion occurs, when two hydrogen atoms combine to form one, but controlling the temperature of the plasma may be difficult. The longest run so far has been two minutes. Chinese experts forecast that in about 10 years, they will be able to increase the lifespan of stable plasma to several hours based on recent advancements in fusion technology. Before the start of the subsequent cycle, the reactor must be shut down due to plasma instability. The ideal fusion reactor would be able to operate continuously for several months, if not years. By connecting the CFETR to the electrical grid, China will become the first country on the planet to harness the energy of an artificial sun. In their study, Shang's team came up with a clever idea in the form of a heat sink using conceptual architecture. The heat generated by the nuclear reactor is expected to be transferred to a molten salt sink by helium gas. As the sink's overall energy level grows, the salt will reach a temperature of 600 degrees Celsius. The hot molten salt will then be transferred to a heat exchanger bringing water to a boil and generating energy using a typical steam turbine. Some energy will be lost since the salt-assisted heat exchange mechanism is more sophisticated than those used in most existing power plants. According to Shang, the heat sink can effectively protect the reactor from pulse energy shocks while connecting the fusion reactor to existing power systems. Fusion reactors are considered safer than nuclear reactors because they shut down and terminate the thermonuclear process in the event of an accident. They also do not generate any radioactive waste. The CFETR began in 2017 as a follow-up project to the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor ITER, the world's first fusion reactor currently under construction in southern France. 
If it is successful, ITER will run for up to 10 minutes, demonstrating that fusion produces more energy than it consumes. According to Chinese officials, the CFETR will further bridge the gap between scientific research and commercial applications. China's stated goal may appear overly ambitious, and its alleged discovery has yet to be confirmed. It would be a game-changer if Chinese researchers could deliver on their claims. Nuclear fusion energy's commercialization would be very advantageous for the rest of the world in a vast country like China, which has massive energy needs. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. Do you think these claims from China are true? Share all of your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.